again. General solutions. It'd be funny if it doesn't work again. All right, here we go. So general solutions, I said that it's exactly like you're calculating for restricted domain, except now you're going to try to write a formula to account for all possible solutions. So I gave an example. I said cos of x equals to half. And I'm giving you a restricted domain. I said it's from 0 to 2 pi. So that means in your unit circle, we are now looking at from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So it's one revolution. And we're asking, when is cos? Remember, that's your x-axis. Cos represents all your x values. You're asking, when is it equal to half? So let's say half is here, because it's got a maximum distance of 1, or radius of 1. So that means it's asking, when will I hit those two points? And so this is when you ask, you say, OK, well then, what is cos inverse of half? Cos of what? Cos of what angle? <coughs> will give you half, and that's when you use the exact values and you say cos of, and it's up there, pi and three. Okay, so we know cos of pi and three, if this was the distance of pi and three, so meaning from here to here, that's a distance pi and three, or 60 degrees, that will give me half. So cos equals to half, and same thing is pi and three distance here. So what you would have done is you would have said, all right, it would have been starting from zero, and you're adding on by pi and 3 distance. That's why I said 0 plus pi and 3. And then you say, well, it's also short of 2 pi by pi and 3. So that's why you said 2 pi minus pi and 3. That gives you two solutions from 0 to 2 pi. But then what if it's not just from 0 to 2 pi? What if it was from 0 to 4 pi? Then you say you do another revolution. So each one of these points, you are now going to add another 2 pi because that's what you're doing you're saying from this point to do another revolution that's adding another 2 pi so that means I'm adding another 2 pi to this and I'm also adding another 2 pi to 5 pi and 3 <coughs> and then if you keep adding on 2 pi adding on 2 pi adding 2 pi that technically will account for all solutions in the positive direction and so, is there a way to write this as a formula? And that's what general solutions is. General solutions is just another way of writing this. So what you can see is, I've just taken pi on 3, and I said if I added on 2 pi, see 3 times 2 is 6, and plus the extra 1, that gives me 7 pi. And then 7 pi plus another 2 pi, same thing again, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 7 is 13. And so there has to be a quicker way of writing pi and 3 plus 2 pi, pi and 3 plus now together, this makes it 4 pi. And then pi and 3 plus another in total 6 pi. So there had to be a quicker way to do this. But what we knew is they're groups of 2 pi. And so what we can write is we can say, well, this is the same thing as saying pi on 3 plus 2 pi, well how many groups of 2 pi do I have? Do I have 2 groups? Or do I have 3 groups? Or 4 groups? Or 5 groups? Okay, what you can see are those numbers, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 groups of 2 pi are integers. They weren't 2 and a half, they were, is it 1 group, 2 groups, 3 groups? And so therefore, we use a letter n or parameter. It doesn't have to be n, it could have been k. Could have been A, it doesn't matter, but we generally use N. And N, this is accounting for all possible N values being a part of the integer system. So we would say, all right, well then, where N is element of Z. This is your first general solution, just for the one point at pi and 3. But you also need another one for 5 pi and 3. And how did you get 5 pi and 3? Well, you got 5 pi and 3 because you knew it was 2 pi minus pi and 3. That's how you got 5 pi and 3. And then for every point here onwards, you're going to add on another 2 n pi. And that's all your general solutions for all the first point and then for all the second point. Now then we have to write a formula for you to work this out, but all I did was I just found out the two coordinates and then for, for each one I just plus 2n pi. 
because I know that one revolution in a sine function is 2 pi. That's why it's 2n pi, it's every 2 pi. So that means, now I can rewrite this now. The general solution, so we're saying, okay, let's, let's actually write a formula for this. We can say, all right, well, for pi on 3, 7 pi on 3, 13 pi on 3, 19 pi on 3, I'm just actually working out this solution here. Okay, so it's every 0, 2 pi, uh, 4 pi, 6 pi, you're always adding up by pi on 3. That's all your solutions. Okay, and how I got that was I said starting from 0 or 2 pi or 4 pi or 6 pi, doesn't matter where, but I'm adding on the cos inverse of half. Which is, that's why I know it was pi, pi on 3. So cos inverse of half, and then I'm adding on the revolution, the number of revolutions I have, plus 2n pi. This will give me the formula overall for my general solution, which if I rewrite it, it's just saying 2n pi plus pi n3, which is cos inverse of half. So we normally don't write our answers as 2n pi plus pi n3. We normally collect them as one fraction. So this would be 3 times 2, which is 6n pi plus pi all over 3. But you can see there's a factor of pi, so I can write it as 6n plus 1 on 3. And that will be the general solution, given that n is an element of z for this one point. And that's only one solution. So I've, read it, I've written a general solution for the first coordinate of first solution, and then you still have another one down the bottom. And down on the bottom, it follows the same concept. So the bottom is also the same thing. You're saying it's pi on 3, but how do you get there? Well, it was either 0 minus the cos inverse of pi and 3, or you can think of it as 2 pi minus cos inverse of pi and 3. But regardless, that's exactly the same thing as saying 4 pi minus cos inverse of pi and 3. So we can write a general solution for this. I can say it's just every 2n pi. So I can write the general solution as 2n pi minus the cos inverse of pi and 3. Because 2n pi, if n was 0, then it would just be 0 minus pi and 3. Actually, that shouldn't be pi and 3. It should have been half. There we go. Half, 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 half. Okay? And so from there, this is, this is me trying to give you the logic to finding out your general solution. General solution is exactly the same way as you've been solving for your restricted domain. The only thing is I'm generalizing, and the only part I'm generalizing would be right here. That's all you're generalizing. It is literally this part that makes the difference. See, the pi on 3 comes from doing the cos inverse. If you know your exact values, then you've got it. The only part you had to generalize was 2n pi. Now, I want you to see that when we find the general solutions, we write them out as a collected fraction. This is for your fourth quadrant general solutions. This is for your first quadrant general solutions. Okay, so that's why I've shown you that it was equal to 6n plus 1 pi on 3. And the next one, you follow the same thing, and you collect it. You get 2, 12n minus 1 uh, pi on 3. And the same thing again, it is for all n values as an element of z. And that should account for every one of them. So, for example, if I said n was 1, then 12 minus 1 is 11. 11 pi and 3 is a general solution. That would have been a solution for the next one. And it makes sense because 11 pi on 3 is actually the same thing as saying 4 pi minus pi on 3, which is this, this point. It's the same thing. This is when n equals 1. So if you want to find the next one, you can say when n equals 2. So if n equals 2, 24 minus 1 which is 23. So 23 pi on 3 is the same thing as saying 6 pi minus pi on 3. And 6 pi minus pi on 3 is exactly the same point. You see, and then you can find the next one just by saying, well, n equals 3, then you have 8 pi 
minus pi and three. And you go to the next one, and that's how you write a general solution because that accounts for all possible solutions that passes through this point where x will equal to half. That's why they gave you the formula to memorize, and I didn't want to memorize it because it's really straightforward. And this point is cos inverse of a. A is just the value. In our case, it's half. It could have been root 3 on 2, it could have been 0, it could have been 1. But cos inverse of A just tells you what you're adding, what you're subtracting, what, what the distance is. It just tells you where you're starting. So you're starting, if you're starting it, you're finding in quadrant 1 and 4, then it'll be 0 plus, it's my plus. 0 plus, or 2 pi plus, or 4 pi plus. And that's what this is accounting for. 2 n pi, you can write that as every 2 pi. Same thing with this one. So this is just quadrant four. If you want to find all the solutions in quadrant four, you would have said from zero minus pi and three, or two pi minus pi and three, or four pi minus pi and three. And so this is what this is accounting for. Two n pi is accounting for every two pi revolutions minus. Again, that's if it's in quadrant one or quadrant four. If it's in the other quadrants, and you start from those points, it'll be every odd. And so that's why your general solution for your costs, you can just write it as in one go, technically the same thing, you can just write it as 2n pi plus or minus cos inverse of a. And they tell you to memorize this, but I don't want you to memorize that. Because if you understood how to find solutions with restricted domain, technically you already have learned how to do general solutions. Okay? So again, just to summarize for the cosine, you solve for general solutions exactly the same way you'd normally do for restricted domain. The only difference is you're writing the formula for where your starting point is. So it's for every 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, and that's what 2n pi is accounting for, depending on n. So if n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, every time you times it by 2, it gives you an even, even number, that's why. Okay, so that's the reason why you've got that general solution. So therefore, when you write a formula, it's very important, whoops, very important to write the parameter n. And this only comes up if it's in exam one, whereas in the multiple choice section, they would, they would have defined it for you. Okay, they would have defined And one of the past exam questions, I'll get you to see, um, even if you've narrowed it down that you have to write n, you have to realize that n is an integer. An integer is written with z. Z is the symbol for integers, and that's a key for one of the questions I'm going to show you later, and, and it's whether you understood that. That had to be every integer value, okay? So if you use the same logic that I just showed you for cosine, and you use it for tan and sine, it's exactly the same thing. So this is for tan. Tan, if we're talking about tan of A, tan of theta equals to A, for example, okay? then we're assuming, let's say, A is positive, then these are the only two points that you'd have. Then you'd say it's every zero plus tan inverse of A. Okay? And then over here, it's every pi plus tan inverse of A. But technically, since you're adding here you're adding and here you're adding well there's no difference technically it doesn't matter and the period is one pi that is why they've generalized it to n pi because if you're starting at zero zero you're adding on tan inverse of a or you're starting over here and you're still doing pi plus tan inverse of a or you're starting over here which is two pi and you still do two pi plus tan inverse of a or you start at the other point it's going to be 3 pi plus tan inverse of a so what you can see is that to generalize this it's all about generalizing here so you can either memorize the formula or you can derive it logically the only thing that's changing is not the plus it's not the tan inverse of a the only thing that's changing is 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi and what you can do is you can count that already 0 1 2 3 4 which is why they wrote and pi there's your integers that's why you'd say where n is an element of z, okay? And so all I'm doing is I'm using exactly the same theory as I'm doing for cosine, and you can do the same thing for sine. See, sine is positive 
Over here, and you'd say same thing. 2n pi every 2 pi, you add on sine inverse of a. If you want to find where sine is also positive again, sine is positive again on this side. And this is every odd pi minus sine inverse of a. You see, that's why this is the formula. Because this formula is just saying 2n pi plus pi just makes it an odd number. It's an odd pi. And because it's an odd pi, you minus the theta. Now you can rewrite this, and that gives you 2n plus 1 pi minus sine inverse of a. But really, I'm just writing the general solution for this point, every odd pi. This is just accounting for every odd. If you times 2 makes it even, plus 1 makes it odd. Every odd pi minus the angle. Every odd pi minus the angle. So I'm writing all the general solutions for this quadrant. And this one will be every even pi plus the angle. And so therefore I've made two general solutions for sine. Okay, so at the end of the day, if uh, this logic doesn't make sense, I guess you can just uh, memorize all this. Okay, so if it all doesn't make sense, you can memorize all this and you can just generalize plus minus cosine is 2n pi plus minus plus inverse of a, tan n pi plus tan inverse of a, and then sine, you've got two different ones because of the two, it's either even pi's or odd pi's, okay, that's why it's got two separate ones, and you've got 2n pi plus, or you've got every odd pi minus. Okay, this is your general solution for it. But one thing I do want you to pay attention to, just in case it comes up this year, which I haven't seen it come up, uh, but just in case it does. A. What is A? You see, A is the number. A is the number around your unit circle. So when I say cos inverse of half, see half represents the x value. If I said sine inverse of half, that represents the y value. What is my maximum x values and y values in a unit circle? It's 1 to negative 1. That is why a is an element from negative 1 to 1. And the reason why I emphasize this is because in I think it might be in this one, this PowerPoint, one of the questions, or maybe it's the next one, one of the questions, it will test this idea. As soon as you get, let's say, uh, cos inverse of 2, you should have realized there are no solutions to this. And, and when, I think it's in the next uh, PowerPoint, which is the next lesson, that's 6H. Um, you'll get a question, a past exam question, where if you were doing it by hand, or if you did any calculator, it would say false or undefined. And a lot of students don't realize what that means. And it just means that you can't have a solution. You can't do cos inverse of two. It doesn't exist. Your maximum value is one, negative one to one, okay? And that's why tan, if you remember tan, it goes infinitely, it's your gradient and it can be infinite or undefined. That is why it is an element of all real values. It goes on to negative infinity and positive infinity. Okay, so that's the only one thing I want you to make sure to understand. A represents what is possible in the unit circle. Okay, now let's do, um, when you take a look at this um, in your own time, I want you to try these two questions. Now, that's a summary. So again, for these general solutions, if you don't understand what I was trying to teach, you can memorize this. Because as I was trying to show you, there aren't many questions from 2002 to 2015. I only found three questions so far on general solutions. So it really says, you know, there aren't much to do about it. So if you didn't want to understand it, memorize this, okay? There you go. So memorize it or understand the unit circle, up to you. But this is the first one. You can either do this by hand or you can do it on a calculator. I did it on a calculator, so I got the answer within 15 seconds. But I want you to have a go at this. And the same thing, if you understand how to do this, you'd, oh, whoops, I'm giving you the answers. <laughs> uh, if you understand how to do this, then the next one, 2009, same thing. So this was before it was 2005, 2009, so five years later, they had another one in your multiple choice. And it's important to know just because 2004 they had one by hand and that looks a bit tricky but it's not. Okay, so I'm going to get you to do that last but we're going to do, we're going to do this one first. Okay, so let's go with this. Do it by hand or a calculator.
If you were to do this by hand, you'd approach it by tan. Oh, that's true too. Oh. How else would you do it by hand? Count for one on root three. Just in case you wanted me to explain it by hand, uh, what I did was I divided both sides by cos of 2x and divide both sides by root 3 and what you get is tan of 2x equals to 1 and root 3. Then I did, like you normally would solve for tan, you would say tan inverse of both sides, so tan, or tan inverse of 1 and root 3, which I know is pi on 6. And I drew the unit circle and said, all right, well, pi and 6 has to be in quadrant uh, 1 and 3. And so therefore, 2x equals to, and I write the general solution, it's every pi plus. And so every n pi plus pi and 6, divide everything by 2, and I get my answer as n pi on 2 plus pi on 12. But remember, n is an element of z. And out of all of them, I guess um, the only two that looks very similar is D and E. Uh, the only difference is one is element of Z and one's element of R. So if you understood what K is standing for, it doesn't have to be N. It's just a number times your pi on two. Then, uh, and it's, it's one, two, three, four. It's every one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. Uh, then you knew that element of R would make sense. Okay, so unless you were memorizing it, that was testing students memorizing the value of A. See, tan inverse, and A was an element of R for tan. So maybe students would have thought it would have been an element of R. Okay, but the answer would be, whoops, D. Okay, but if you were to do it uh, by calculator, it would have been uh, within 15 seconds. This is what you would have done. 
you would have typed in solve cos of 2 times x equals to root 3 times sine of 2x and it gives you that which you have to break the fraction apart so pi times 6 they call it n3 but you can treat it as an n so 6 n pi plus pi all over 12 and you can simplify 6 and 12 to be half which is why you got n pi on 2 plus pi on 12 okay and you can do the same for the next one so that's 2005 four years later they said all right let's put another one in again your multiple choice and you can do the same you can do this by hand same way i taught you do it by hand or you can do it with a calculator okay
Okay, so for the next one, in a, in a similar sense, I guess this is a bit different because you're looking at one solution. You're looking at one solution because negative one occurs right at this point. Unlike the other ones, you had two points, so you can start at either the odd pi or even pi. Uh, and technically, in this case, you can start at any point. Uh, that's why it took me a while to find the actual answer for it. Um, they're saying sine of 2x has to equal to negative 1. Now we know the angle to get negative 1 is going to be negative pi on 2. Or you can think of it as 3 pi on 2. So that's how I started off. That's why I couldn't find my answer there. And so I started off with 0 instead. And I said minus pi on 2. And it gives you negative 1. So I'm just saying at negative, negative pi on 2, that will give me my negative 1. And so 2x equals at every negative pi on 2 plus 2n pi because it's every revolution. And that's what I've had, and that's what I got over here. 2n pi minus pi on 2. And divide everything by 2, that gives me n pi minus pi on 4, which gives me. Okay. Or alternatively, you could use a calculator and you would have got the same approach. Okay. Now, the one that I thought was tricky. These one, both of these should have taken le less than fifteen seconds with a calculator. So if you're on the exam, you see this, use a calculator. Yeah. But uh, it's nice to be able to do it by hand because if it did come up uh, in exam one, which, like I said, it's it's been very scarce. I don't know how likely it would be on the uh, the end of year exam for this year, but in case, just in case, if it does come up exam one, I would expect it to be something like this, um, because it requires dilation, translation, to really see if you can play around and manipulate that. And you're doing exactly the same thing if you're solving it as you always would. The only difference is you have to write it in your um, general solution form. And have you noticed, Sign out of all the two for uh, out of the three formulas. Out of the three formulas, sine would be the hardest one because you've got you're starting at either odd pi and even pi. That's why it's tricky. Whereas cos was really easy. It starts at two pi or every even pi plus or minus, and tan is every pi. So that was easy to do. So if they were to give you one, I'd expect it to be a sine. Okay, that's that's how I would see it. Sine would be the tricky one. So have a go with this one. I'll write the solutions, but uh, we're running out of time. So we'll write the, I'll write the solutions and I'll post it up as well. Okay? But have a go with this one. And I'm just going to...